get right into it. Let's get Lee Spencer in right now to join us on the show. The biggest news, well, I don't know, the biggest news in a long, long time. I don't know when the, we've had bigger news. Maybe Carl Edwards when he retired, but that's not as big as This Dale. is not shocking, though. This is not shocking. Not I, was more, I was more shocked about Carl oh, retiring yeah. than I was junior. We said it from the get-go when he set out 18 weeks last year that we thought that Dale Earnhardt Jr. would, t- re- would retire sooner than later. And sure enough, here we are just early into the 2017 season, and he's made up his mind. Lee Spencer was down there with the announcement. Lee, uh, no surprise here, I guess, um, that Junior's retiring. No, not at all. I think he did what was in you know his best interest for his long-time health, and I think he made the right decision. Yeah, I, I think so, too. Um, I mean, let's be honest. We've talked about this many times that – um, the drivers, drivers of today's generation are not going to race until they're 50, 55 years old like drivers in the past. No, they don't have to. And, mm-hmm. you know, fortunately with the type of medical advancements that we have had in, um, you know, neurology and, and concussions, I think Junior has a very good idea as to, um, you know, what, those, what the limitations could possibly be should he get injured again. Each time it seems to be a little bit, you know, worse, and I, I think it kind of hits home the the thought that, hey, you know, yes, this is a dangerous sport, and, and um, you know, maybe I want to have the type of uh, quality of life that my father didn't have, um, you know, given the fact that his life was cut short, and um, I, I think he made the right decision for himself, quite frankly. We're talking about attendance this year. I think attendance will spike. Kirk and I had this conversation i think it was yesterday i absolutely think we'll see attendance spike up this year what about you i certainly hope so i i've got to tell you i really i understand with the weather you didn't come to bristol scott but yeah. my gosh you missed one hell of a show i think if you oh, had been up in the press box with me the things young money did and i know that you guys were the first two um media members that were part of the to Kyle Larson fan club, and, and you put him on my radar early, and I'm glad you did because my gosh, that kid put that car places you have you haven't seen in Bristol in years. And yeah. even Dale Jr. mentioned that the other day. But my gosh, that kid was just spectacular, and he is the show right now. I mean, I'm sorry, he is, and you know he's still under 25. You have a guy like that, a kid like Blaney, a kid like Chase Elliott, you know the Chase Briscoes of the world that are coming up. Uh, William Byron, um, this this sport is is flush right now with talent, and these old guys, you know, they they better have their sponsors in love with them because the, the, these young guys are ready to knock the door down. And you know, good riddance. Well, you know, like I said, because I have not seen these guys really show me that they have a passion to be here anymore. And if they don't want to be, there's the door. Yeah, uh, Lee. We'll talk about the race in our second segment, but I want to ask you. Who do you, I mean, for me, I think Alex Bowman has earned the right. What do you have, like uh, two or three top five finishes or top ten finishes when he drove that car, what, ten or eleven times last year? I mean, and he could have won a race along the way. I think he's earned the right to get in there. But I also think that if you're Rick Hendrick and you're Hendrick Motorsports, that you've got to really sit back and think about who's going to be available in two years. So maybe you give a guy like Alex Bowman, maybe a year, two-year contract just to see what he can do until maybe some of these guys like uh, Byron comes up through the ranks or, or, or somebody like, unless you can get somebody like.